Yeah, I reckon oh, you can. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't realise it went so low. <laughs> That's why it's, it's hard to make me look support. so short. <laughs> Hi guys and welcome to this week's episode of The Third Half. My name's Matt and you might notice a little bit of difference on the panel this week. One, I got a haircut. Also, we got Robbie Morgan sitting in for Jamie Hosey. Hi guys. Welcome Robbie. Just remember guys, if you want to get involved for next week's show, make sure you t comment below or tweet us at The Rugby Revolt. We'll get into the rugby action shortly. First, we have to discuss the biggest news of the week, which has to be the head and the concussion issue which reared its head particularly this week with a number of doctors making recommendations that tackling is banned uh for under 18 schools robbie it's, it's it just can't happen i mean there's you always get health warnings about everything like this but you, you just it's taken away a pretty major part of the game um for for young people and it's not going to help anyone encouraging the game and younger people and anything like that. I just, I don't know. I'm, I, I don't think it can happen. I don't see how it, how someone, how the RFU or anyone else can let it happen, no matter what these seventy doctors or how many are saying. But that's part of the game, and that's part of the reason we love the game and everyone else loves the game. Not to get injured, but you know, it's it's a big part of the game, and I, I mean, I think cutting tackling out until eighteen even brings in its own health risk like I saw I think it was Brian Moore tweeted that f sort of fully grown men at 18 suddenly going into a scrum situation is going to be really really dangerous Maggie if, Alfonso also yeah you know that, yeah. you th you spend your you, your school years from 11 to 18 whatever building up the muscles you need to be able to compete in a tackle in a scrum in a mall at an adult age you know and if you just cut all that out then I think more people are going to, maybe not head injuries, but more people are going to get hurt, um, hurt like, like that. Well, the views have been, you know, it's been heavily condemned from the rugby community. I guess that should be too. And I hate to toe the party line, sound like Will Greenwood, who made very good points a couple of weeks ago regarding head injuries in rugby. Your kids learn so much from the sport in terms of teamwork, communication, and to... to so that was talking and specifically regarding to parents al allowing yeah. their kids to play rugby. But if you're going to take away tackling, then that, it's such a elemental part of the game, and it's it, it's it's it can't happen. It, 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 yeah. it just can't happen. It, it, like you said, once they hit 18, suddenly they're thrust into full com full physical combat yeah. against these grown men. It just can't happen. I just feel it's a typical stance from paper pushers at the highest level. Yeah, you know, people that have maybe played a game maybe their whole life one game suddenly think well you know we gotta stop yeah, head, head it's, injuries it's, it's, it's proper scaremongering and I don't know I just don't see how it can happen it's like you know it's like going to boxing and saying right you're allowed to box but you're not allowed to hit each other hmm. you know it, it just can't happen if you take tackling out of rugby you've lost rugby like obviously there's touch rugby and tag rugby and stuff like that but it's just not the same and people are always talking about how they want to keep pushing the game and you just it's, this is a backward step what I fi find funny about the situation is that it's only in the UK mm. you know it's 70 doctors you know condensed to the UK I mean I saw a comment on a Facebook thread and an Irish guy commented and said what are these recommendations <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where are they coming from imagine that just in the UK if tackling was banned before 18, well, yeah, I mean, England rugby's bad enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty much know what you guys are going to think. But do tell us below, comment or tweet us at the Rugby Revolt. You know, uh, should tackling be banned? I mean, I know they ban it until about under 10s in particular countries. And particularly in New Zealand, they have a weight difference. Instead of it's not done by age, it's yeah. done by weight, which is a plausible solution. But yeah, what should they do? What... Yeah, let us know. So now we'll look back at all the rest of the rugby action. I mean, obviously, there were some good three games played on the weekend, Six Nations. At last, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, what would you make of it? Um, yeah, it was good. It still wasn't as as good as I wanted it to be, uh, this tournament, but it was definitely an improvement on the first two rounds, I think. 
although that Wales France game was, a, yeah, was yeah. on the same level. Sorry to those who called me out and s- me saying last week that it would be the game of the round yeah. because it really oh, wasn't. It was, it was so beige, like it was just it wasn't entertaining in mm. any way. Um, but the rest of the weekend was pretty good. The uh, the Italy Scotland game, game was great. It was incredibly frustrating as a Scotland fan as watching any Scotland game is. But started great, sort of first, well, most of the second half was just painful to watch um, until the end we finished, finished on it a It was high. good to see the endeavour from the, from Italy and Scotland. Well, from no, both sides, yeah. yeah. Both, I think that's why it was such a good game is because it was, they're both in a position where it essentially was, at the time, was the wooden spoon battle and it was, you know, we but we, we can't, out defend each other. We've both got to um, <coughs> got to actually play some rugby. So they're both teams spinning it, trying all sorts of things, which in a lot of cases paid off, and we had a really high scoring game. It was, it was great to watch. It was probably the best opening thirty minutes for the last couple of years. I would say, I would say in the Six Nations. Yeah, maybe. What did you make of England? Um, Saturday afternoon. I mean, the game again wasn't amazing. It was better, but it. It's just the fact that England, we haven't seen anything new yet. Mm. And I know it's early days for, for Eddie Jones and the, the new players and everything, but it, they they were still just defending. And I feel like the where Ireland are at the moment, they really could have gone for the jugular mm. and they could have put some huge moves, back moves past Ireland and scored loads and loads of tries. But they were still in this mindset of defence first, defence first, defence first. I still think they're struggling to find their identity a little. Of course, it's their what? It's their third game with a new coach. Yeah, definitely going to be. But like you said, they they really had Ireland kind of on the. They really I had mean, them. Yeah, come, going into round three, watching Ireland's previous two performances, Ireland are are there to be broken mm. at the moment. As as bad as it is to say that their their first two and now their first three performances have just been for Ireland have just been not good at all, and. Um, I think it was really there on a plate for England to... The Grand Slam's still on. Eddie, yeah, Eddie's yeah gonna, definitely. <laughs> how would you feel to be Eddie Jones coming to this England side against pretty below par rest of the Six Nations coming and well, being I, on, the, on I, the road to the Grand Slam? I think that's his game plan and I think that's why we haven't seen any change yet and we've seen he's got Paul Gustard in with his Wolfpack defence to, mm. to keep things tight and I think... It's paid off. Yeah, and I think Eddie Jones' approach at the moment is... You know, don't change their game plan that they've had drilled into them for the last however many years overnight. Do it slowly, build on what they know already, and obviously, doing that slowly, it's going to take time, mm-hmm. and that's why we haven't seen much of a change. But it's working. Also, last week we looked forward to the Super Rugby. How good was it having back from someone yeah. from the from the south? <laughs> um, it was very good to have it. All my sad day was spent on the couch watching rugby. My canes got a belting. Kind of saw it, kind of didn't. With their awful forward pack. 52... 52-10. 52-10, 50, yeah, yeah. Something around that. Yeah, not not a good a big, start. Big score for an better, opening weekend, yeah. Better to have it now than in a couple yeah, in, yeah. in a couple of months, maybe. Jaguars were impressive. Oh, yeah, that was shooters. great to see. I mean, we sort of... You guys talked about that last week a bit, that actually, they're, because it is pretty much just Argentina, They we thought they were going to come out fighting, and they have... Beating the cheaters, was it 34 32? 34 33. 34 33. Yeah. Really. really I did tight. have a bet for £5 with Jamie. Oh, yeah. I bet on the cheaters because uh, everyone was saying to me, Jaguar is going to pump them. Jaguar is going to pump them. I said, no. Up on the high veldt, cheaters playing that real unpredictable yeah. rugby, it, it can change. And it, well, it did. I almost had it until about, about the last minutes, last couple of minutes. But um, I'll be presenting him as five pound <laughs> in a ceremony next 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 week which you'll get to watch in the third <laughs> half yeah uh other it was good to see the sun wolves they were competitive uh, yeah at times. i think they they put up a fight and i mean it is the opening weekend don't know if that fight will continue mm. through throughout the season but it was it's nice to see really good to see mm. um because i know like jamie keeps going on about how they're just going to get trounced week in week out and they lost but they didn't get trounced they, mm. they, they held held their own so 
Moving on to your comments this week, guys. We had a comment from Siege CJ. Thanks for your comment, Siege CJ. With Scotland putting their losing streak to bed, is this the launch pad for them to ring in a new era of consistent winning? That's a bit far, don't you think, Siege? I don't know. I mean, everyone said before Italy, and everyone has said after Italy, including Vern Cotter and Greg Laidlaw and plenty of other people, that Italy, the Italy win is what Scotland needed to to push them forward, and I'd like to believe that. But you know, France next. It is in Murrayfield. It's likely to be a crappy day. You could <laughs> do it, but I, d- I don't think it's going to. It ring would be it. nice to think so, but I mean, they've had so many times, they've yeah. had so many opportunities to turn a corner. Yeah. And they just haven't managed to. They still leaked twenty points. They were still, mm-hmm. they were still, really. The game was still up in the air in the seventieth minutes, until that final try pushed them out. Probably the score deserved to be probably a bit closer than it was. Yeah, if I'm honest. And I, I, I don't know. They just need to shore up a, a number, number of parts of their game. I think it will be really good for Scotland to finish above fifth and sixth. <laughs> in the table <laughs> well, fi- fifth or sixth words of a real <laughs> loser <laughs> you're not no, a loser I'm not a loser a I'm, just, I'm just a Scotland fan <laughs> words from I need spoken to, why, from a true where's Scotland where's Jamie I need Jamie <laughs> no I, th- I think it'll be really good if yeah. they can you know psychologically wise yeah, to, absolutely. To, to finish not in the wooden spoon race mm. um, I think that'll be really good for them moving forward but I, it's like we always say, Scotland, they they don't really know how to win. No, and they I, always I, I, I snatch vic- always snatch defeat from the from the jaws of the victory. jaws of victory. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it was after that um, after the loss to Australia in the course finals last year. There was a, a tweet from someone that was like, Scotland would lose heartbreakingly in the final moments of tiddlywinks and it's so true it's it's not just rugby it's it's Scottish sport in general apart from curling obviously (laughs) quick question regarding the Lions we had from Bath fan I think it was thanks for your question which I guess the Lions will be chosen probably in a year's time 12 months time yeah Um, probably maybe a little bit later maybe April, May next year now we've had a taste of the Six Nations who would you like to see coach the Lions who should support them and why From, from for me Gatlin, you got to keep Gatlin in charge next year. Yeah. He's gone to New Zealand. I mean, he d- he did so well last time round. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. the The question is, if not him, who yeah, who, who else? else? That's right. So imagine if Eddie Jones just slotted him. <laughs> the, imagine the funeral. No, oh. I don't, no I don't, it's not going to happen. That's not happening. Who to support him though? After seeing mm. how well. Uh, Paul Gustav's done Just in a, such a short yeah. amount of time in England. I, I've got to say, I think he'd be. He's going to be. Yeah, you he's going to get a phone call. I think. Right, that's all we've got time for this week, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure you drop a like on the video. If you want to get involved uh, with next week, make sure to comment below or tweet us at the Rugby Revolt. If you're new to the channel and want to see more, click above to subscribe, and uh, and we'll see you next week. See you guys.